Hello fellow makeup lovers, I am so excited for this video because today we're going to be talking about an indie brand that you're all sleeping on and I already know I'm going to entitle the video that just because I feel like it's very catch eye-catching. I know not everyone, not everyone is sleeping on them so your all is kind of like a generalization but I feel like this is such an underrated indie brand. I love them so so much. I want to give them their moment. I've done quite a few videos on M Cosmetics, but I thought today I would go ahead and talk about my entire collection. I'm just going to kind of review them, review the eyeshadows, review the highlighters. I'm going to swatch every single shade for you guys so you can see some live swatches. And then I also did go ahead and film this look using these eyeshadows, so that'll be at the end of the video. And I'm just super, super excited about it. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So just to give you a quick introduction to M Cosmetics, I thought I'd go ahead and read off their About Us page on their website. So it says, M Cosmetics is a small business based in Kitchener, Canada. We manufacture and sell our own makeup and cosmetic line. Our products are all handmade and cruelty-free. They are formulated with few ingredients, which makes them a healthier option. Our objective is to offer great quality products that are made individually with love and care. They have their own charm being handmade, especially for our lovely clients. We love very much what we do and we are always motivated to expand our product line with new, fun, and cre very creative items. They also do ship worldwide, so they have a variety of products. And the thing about M Cosmetics is because they are such a small brand, they normally don't have everything in stock at one time. So I don't, right now, I just looked on their website and they don't even have any highlighters in stock. So I'm not sure about that. And then if you go to their eyeshadows, a ton of them are sold out. And it's kind of one of those things where you have to wait and um, just wait it out until perhaps the eyeshadows or the certain ones that you want are all available at the same time. I feel bad complaining about that because they are a small brand. I'm sure they're doing the absolute most that they can to keep products in stock, but it can be a little bit discouraging whenever you want to make an order and you want to get all the things you want at once and you can't, so that is something to keep in mind. Their eyeshadows all retail for eight Canadian dollars each, which is about $5.81 in US dollars. I can't remember how much the highlighters retail for because, again, the highlighters are not currently on the website, but I want to say maybe they were like 10 or 12 Canadian dollars. Nothing crazy by any means. They do have some coupon codes. I think you can use the code first order for 5% off. I have a referral link, which is just the same referral link as any other customer has. I have not received PR. I don't have any affiliate, anything with M Cosmetics. I just really love them. The only thing is they have sent... I think maybe one order I had, they sent like four or five extra shadows, but I've purchased everything else myself. Um, but again, I have the referral link, which has nothing to do with being on YouTube. And every time someone uses it, they get 7% off, so that's a way to save. I literally have so many $5 off coupons from that referral link. It's almost comical because you can only apply one per order, so I have like $5 off for life, basically, is what it feels like at this point. But those are ways to save some extra money. And I believe the Canadian shipping, I think it's like 15 Canadian dollars, which is like roughly, I'm, I'm going to say like 12 US dollars or something. So not too bad, but something to keep in mind. All right, so now let's jump into the products, which I'm obsessed with, as you already know. So they have a good variety of matte and shimmer shades. I want to say that I own every single matte shade that they offer in their line. I'm pretty sure that I do. I don't, I don't own every single shimmer. I don't have the neutral shimmer options, which maybe I'll get some eventually, but I do have, I'm pretty sure, all of the mattes to show you. And then I have the two highlighters, which one is more neutral and one is more colorful. So I'm just going to break it up by talking about the matte shades, then the metallic shades, and then the highlighters. So starting off with the mattes, they are my absolute favorite. Like, I can't express it enough. I'm pretty sure and I'm gonna be honest it's really really hard for me to say anything is like my number one my favorite formula I get those questions all the time with indie brand it's like what's your top brand what's your top formula and it is so hard to decide because for one there's so many that I love there's so many that have different color options and I'm just super indecisive but I I'm gonna do it I'm gonna say it M Cosmetics is my favorite matte formula from an indie brand they are pigmented, smooth, blendable, buildable. I've never had a problem where I like 
added a bunch of shades and then like they stop blending or they stop wanting to build or they start fluffing off. They are so pigmented but so soft and so smooth and you'll see it in the swatches. They are so, so smooth and it's not just that they're good as swatches that completely translates to the eyes. So easy to work with. I cannot recommend them enough. And I'm also going to say something a little crazy, but I feel that the M Cosmetics Matte Formula is very similar to the Natasha Denona like regular matte formula. Not their cream ones, but just the regular matte formula, especially playing with my Lila palette this last week or so. The mattes that are in here, I feel like they are like hand on hand, same quality with the M Cosmetics, which obviously this is like way, way more expensive for these mattes. They are the best mattes. Like there's nothing bad that I can say about them. For some people, maybe you won't love the fact that they do have a little bit of kick up whenever you dip into the pan, but I literally, I mean, it's like second nature now because I'm so used to using pigmented shadows. I dip in and then I immediately do this and tap off the excess and I don't have a problem with that at all. It can make your palette look a little messy. There can be a little bit of shades all over, which again is not a big deal to me. I don't mind because everything else about them is so 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 good some of the matte shades that look lighter in the pan do tend to show up a little bit darker whenever they make contact with the skin so that's something to keep in mind the super super light shades look very pale but i feel like at least on my skin tone i can't speak to every skin tone but for me i'll look at them I'm like that's a really light shade but then on the skin and on the eyes it has like more depth to it than i would originally have thought just looking at the pan I feel like there's a really good variety of matte shades. There's so many different warm tones. They have a good range of depth from light, medium to deep, and they have been slowly kind of adding more colorful shades lately. All the recent matte shades they've come out with have been pretty colorful, some purples and some blues and some green. So I'm really, really excited about that. And the more they come out with, the more I will be buying because I love them so, so much. So I'm a huge, huge fan of the mattes. Jumping into the shimmers or the metallics, I would describe them as very thick, creamy, metallic shades. They are really nice. I recommend either using your finger or using a flat shader brush. If you use a flat shader brush, you're going to have to kind of dig in to pick up the product. But once they are on the eyes, they are super vibrant, as you can see, like super pigmented and beautiful. I didn't use a glitter glue. I didn't wet my brush. I just went in with a brush first and then I used my finger to kind of intensify it a little bit. I do get fallout with these shimmers, which is not that big of a deal. It's just something to keep in mind. You either want to powder a little extra more uh, before you do your eyes or you want to do your eyes before you do your face. And I would kind of describe their metallic formula to be very similar to Sydney Grace's metallic. It's just thicker, very creamy, and just a little bit stiffer of a formula, which I think is why using your finger works so well for it. But they are very pigmented very vibrant. They catch the light really beautifully. They do have a good variety of duochromes. They have a bunch of different shades. You can tell that they love like bluey green metallic shades because they've got a lot of those. And I really love the variety of colorful shimmer options they sell because they are really, really pretty. Um, I wouldn't say their metallics are my all-time favorite formula because I tend to go for shades that are a little bit more sparkly whereas these are just like straight up metallic, just like that shine. So it depends on personal preference on how much you'll love these. But either way, I think that they're really, really great shadows. They're pigmented. They're relatively easy to use. I have used them without primer before whenever I've done like really quick, easy looks. And that's being for the mattes and the shimmers. When I use them without primer, I still have no problem blending the mattes or like any wear time problems with those. But the shimmers do crease on me if I don't wear an eye primer, so that's something to keep in mind. If you have super oily lids, I'm not sure if this will be your favorite formula because they are very, very creamy. So yes, I like the metallics. I think they're a great formula. And then jumping into the highlighters, I also really appreciate their highlighter formula. I think it's super nice. It's very, very smooth on the skin, very skin-like, you can see. I've got peach silk on right now and I think it just really blends well into the skin. It gives that kind of glow from within and you can definitely use it with like a stiffer brush and like really build it up and get like that intense glow 
or you can use more of a like fluffy brush and get a little bit more of that soft diffused look but either way I just don't think it emphasizes texture it doesn't look cakey on the skin it just gives a really really beautiful glow I also love the shade peach silk which we'll talk about in a second but I just feel like it is the most perfect peach shade for fair skin tones because I feel like I've tried so many peach highlighters and they always are a little bit too dark for me but this is just a very very light peachy tone and then the other shade is a little bit more crazy it's a very like greenish bluish greenish duochrome and you can use it as an eyeshadow which is what I did today but as a highlighter it also has that same really beautiful skin like quality not as skin like because my skin doesn't actually glow green unfortunately but it does not emphasize texture or look cakey either so that's my review of the quality of the products I think that they are phenomenal and like I just I can't stress it enough like I want them to like blow up and for people to be like oh my gosh talking about M Cosmetics because their quality is so so good and they really deserve more hype so now let's go ahead and jump on into the swatches Okay, so the first shade I have here is on the nude, and it is just a very light neutral transition tone. Okay, next is the shade My Angel, and this is more of a satin. It's a very light baby pink. It kind of has a little bit of like a bright iridescence to it. It looks stunning on the inner corner. This one actually, I feel like I should mention this one is the only metallic formula I feel like is different than the rest. This is just a very soft satin and all of the other shades are metallic. So there is my angel. All right, next is the shade Cotton Candy and this is a very vibrant light pink shade. You can see how pretty it catches the light. I just absolutely love this one. I think it's beautiful all over the lid. It's beautiful on the inner corner. It's a really nice shade if you love pink. All right, so next is the shade Baby Doll, and this is another really beautiful light pink, but this one actually has a blue shift to it. So there's the uh, three pinks together whatever was left over after the swatches. All right, next we have the shade Strawberry Cake Pop, which is a lighter pinky transition shade. See how smooth it is? Dang. And then we have the shade Strawberry Cheesecake, yes, which is another kind of pinky tone, but it's a little bit more muted, a little bit deeper, mixed with brown. Alright, next we have the shade Flower Petal, which is a really bright hot pink. So there's Flower Petal. Next we have the shade Beauty Berry, which kind of has a hot pink base to it, but then it has a purpley blue shift to it, so I would definitely call this one one of the duochromes. I want to say, if I remember correctly, the owner of M Cosmetics told me this was one of her favorite shades. Well, I think she did. And then next we have the shade Pink Lemonade, which is a newer shade to me, but it's a really beautiful, vibrant, kind of pinky, rose gold type of shade, but more on the pink side. So there is Pink Lemonade. All right, next we have the shade Cupcake Frosting, which is more of like a light, purpley, cool tone transition matte. And then we have the shade Elysian, which is a really beautiful lavender matte. I'm going to do a second swatch of that one. Next we have the shade Lily, which this is the one that made me want to buy every single matte they own. I originally bought this and one green matte, and I just love them so much. It's such a beautiful kind of pinky 
purpley matte tune, tune tone and it has I mean I don't know if you can tell it has a really good dip going in there I really really love this shade it's super vibrant smooth just stunning all right next we have the shade urban fairy and this is a light purple with a little bit of a gold reflect to it Next we have the shade Wildflower, which is a pretty true, kind of cool toned, super, super metallic purple. I mean, they all are, but there's just something about this shade. I feel like it's really stunning. I don't even know exactly how to describe it. And then we have the shade Blueberry Ice, which is kind of like... A muted purple it's a little bit deeper I'm trying to get a good swatch even though I'm like going all the way up my arm now so there is the first set of swatches I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a little break because my arms basically run out of room or should I try and do like no no, it's okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop it there. I don't know. I'm feeling a little crazy. So there's those three. All right. Next we have the shade Milk and Two Drops of Coffee, which is pretty much a light gray. It does have a little tiny bit of a purpleness to it. And then we have the shade Periwinkle, which is, you guessed it, a periwinkle. I feel like it's definitely like a very blue periwinkle, but it's pretty. And then we have the shade Mauve Velvet, which is a really beautiful mauve. It's got a, a decent amount of depth to it, too. Now we're kind of getting into a little bit more of my neutral warm row here. And this first shade is called Maracuja Mousse. It's a very light yellow toned transition shade. I feel like of all the matte shades I own, that one is the least soft, which I don't know why that would be. But next we have the shade tangerine which is a really beautiful orangey peachy tone reminds me of all the shades that used to be super hyped up on youtube back in the day just that really nice peachy transition the peachy transition people thought they could not do a look without and then we have the shade peach macaroon which this is a peach as well but it's definitely more of a pinky peach and i actually use this one as blush today which is really um, a beautiful color for blush in my opinion. You just have to be a little bit more careful with it because it's pretty pigmented. I feel like my swatches are looking not as good and that's because I'm rushing them a little bit because I've got so many to do. But there is Peach Macaroon. Right, next we have the shade Carrot Smoothie which is kind of just a mid-tone orange. Next we have the shade Unexpected which is an interesting duochrome. It's more of like a purpley taupe base with a green shift. This shade is a little bit older, so I feel like I have to dig into it a little bit more to kind of get the pigmentation going, but it is a really beautiful shade. So there's Unexpected. There's what Unexpected looks like close up if you want to see the duochrome a little bit more. And then next we have the shade Terracotta, which is a deeper orange. Next is the shade Cocoa Truffle, and this is probably one of my favorite mattes just because I love the tone of this one. I just think it's such a pretty, like, uh, uh what's it called? Like it's a, like a golden brown almost. I don't even know the name I'm looking for, but I really, really love that shade. And then the deepest brown that I have here is the color Chocolate Brownie, and it is a really, really good deepening matte. 
So I think I'm going to stop my row there. I know the periwinkle is like really standing out, but there's more of the neutral options. All right, now for the part I'm most excited about, we're gonna jump into all of the blues and greens. There's some really pretty options here. So first I have the shade Egypt, and this is a really stunning green gold, kind of just like that antique shade. I just love these kind of tones, and this one is super, super vibrant. So there is Egypt, like, look at that. Next we have the shade Avocado, which is a pretty true green. I feel like it has a little bit of a gold undertone, but it's super, super soft. And again, just pigmented. And then next we have the shade Olivia, which is a lighter matte green. All right, next we have the shade Evergreen, which is another pretty true green metallic. This one has a good amount of depth to it as well. I feel like it's a little bit darker than Avocado. Not quite as golden. Next we have the shade Palm Tree, which this is one of the original shades I bought from them, and I love it so much. It is such a nice, just bright green. Super, super soft formula. And then next we have the shade Hawaii, which is a light kind of blue with a little bit of a green aspect to it. Super vibrant. All right, next we have the shade Venice, which is a really, really beautiful green. It just has such a brightness to it. it. Just reminds me of like spring and I don't know. It's just stunning. Look at that. It's like a teal. And we have the shade Amaranthine. I don't even, I feel like I'm pronouncing that all wrong, but it is a pretty true blue. It has a little tiny bit of a green undertone to it. It's a deeper metallic but it is really stunning and then we have the shade blue moon which is more of like a purpley blue as opposed to these like bluey greeny blues that we've been seeing but I really love this one as well I feel like it's really soft really pigmented and it's just I don't know it's kind of an interesting shade All right, next we have the shade Universe, which this one is a little bit more of a multi-chrome, I believe. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I paid a little bit more for this particular shadow. It goes from like a pinky purple to a blue, and it definitely has a bunch of shifts going on there. I haven't used this one very much, if I'm being honest. So I can't, I don't know, I feel like I can't give that great of a review of this compared to other multi-chromes. The formula, to me, feels the same as all of their other shades. It's just, you know, a, a more shifty color. So there is Universe. There's what it looks like up close. You can see the shifts a lot more there. All right, next we have a really beautiful deep navy and this is the shade marine and then last but not least we have the shade concrete jungle which is a really deep gray it almost looks black because of how deep it is but it is not it's gray but again it's just that same really great smooth formula so those are all of the eyeshadow swatched I feel like this little section here this is my favorite probably I mean no I really like the pinky and the purples but I just think like this all together looks so so stunning I feel like they have so many beautiful options here I feel like universe stands out a little bit here because the blue shift isn't pulling quite as much on camera as it is in person but I love these
All right, last but not least, let's swatch these highlighters. So we've got Peach Silk. So there is what Peach Silk looks like. And then we have the shade Sidereal, which does not want to pick up on camera. The shift is too bright, it like blinds the camera, it like doesn't pick it up. And there is Sidereal. All right, so that is my entire collection. Now let's go ahead and jump on in to the tutorial for this look. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the shade Tangerine. I already primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer. I'm just gonna go ahead and sh pop that shade in my crease with a big fluffy brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that out really lightly. This is just gonna be the first matte shade. I plan on going in with quite a few today to get a really good uh, transition and just a really nice blend. I feel like taking my time. I feel like I've been doing a lot of looks lately that are kind of simple and it's like one shade in the crease, one shade in the outer V, one shade on the lid, but I'm gonna go for it today. I'm also gonna go ahead and run that shade along my lower lash line. Next I'm taking the shade Carrot Smoothie and I'm gonna pop that directly into my crease. and then blend upwards. Just adding a little bit more of a vibrant orange. These mattes blend so well, you could probably go in with just this shade and like use it very lightly and make it look as if you had gone in with two shades, but since I have the options and the lighter shades and the deeper shades, I may as well use them and show them. I'm gonna take the shade Terracotta. I'm gonna put that one directly in my crease just slowly building up the intensity more and more. I'm gonna go back into my original blending brush and just blend over the edge. All right, now I'm gonna take the shade Cocoa Truffle and I'm gonna put that into my outer V to start deepening it up. And then whatever's left over on the brush, I'll kind of bring into the crease a little bit. go ahead and go back in with the previous brush again just blend over that edge I really love the tone of cocoa truffle so I'm gonna take that shade along my entire lower lash line pretty much just smudge it out a little bit I'm gonna go back into that bigger pencil brush that I used before on the lower lash line and just blend I think I might even go back into a little bit more of that shade can't remember the name. What was it? Tangerine. Just use that to really blend this out. All right, last but not least for mattes, I know I'm going a little bit crazy, but this is the last one. I'm going to go ahead and take the shade Chocolate Brownie, and I'm going to pop that right on the very most outer part of my outer V, just to add a tiny, tiny bit more depth. It's a really, really nice deep brown. Once I pretty much have that placed where I want it to be, I'm gonna go back into my smaller blending brush and again, just going over the edge. And then I'm gonna take just a tiny little touch of that brown on the outer third of the lower lash line just to connect it. All right, so now finally jumping into some shimmers, I'm gonna start with this shade, which is called Amaranthine which is a really beautiful kind of mid-tone bluey green. So I'm gonna apply that shade to the outer half of my lid, just using a flat brush. I didn't wet it, didn't use any glitter glue, anything like that. Oh man, I forgot, I kinda wanted to do a cut crease, like an actual cut crease, but now, okay, well never mind. <laughs> that was my plan. I'm just so used to doing it like this that I completely forgot. All right, now I'm gonna go into the shade Hawaii, which is a really vibrant, lighter blue-green shimmer, and I'm gonna pop that on the front half of the lid. I'm gonna go into the brush I used with the deepest brown and start off by just blending the outer V. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of Hawaii on my finger, actually, 
just to help see that add some extra intensity I've got one last shade to go in with this and I'm actually going to use a highlighter now and this is the shade sidereal which looks like this it's like a white with like a really green reflect to it so I'm going to go ahead and pop that shade on my inner corner actually you know what? I think I'm going to wet that highlight on my pencil brush just to see if I can make it a little bit more intense I mean it looks fine now it's pretty but I'm just curious I'm actually going to go back into a little bit more of cocoa truffle on the lower lash line just because I don't want to lose that Alrighty, so now really quickly I'm just going to throw on some liner, some mascara, and I'll be right back. For blush today, I'm actually going to go ahead and take one of my shadows, and this is the shade Peach Macaroon. Definitely going to be careful with it. I don't want to, like, have clown cheeks. So I'm just going to pick up a little, put a little on the back of my hand, and then use the excess and have, like, a really nice peachy blush moment. Alright, for highlighter today, I'm going to go into the shade Peach Silk. I'm just going to pop that at the tops of my cheekbones. Such a pretty highlighter. Last but not least for lips, I'm going to go into my ColourPop Luxe Gloss in the shade Overnight, which is a little bit more of a peach, so I thought it would kind of match the vibes of this look. I have no words for the amount of volume my hair has right now. This needs to not. I'm like... <laughs> from the 80s or something oh gosh all right so this is the finished look i really really love how it turned out i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>